Hello. This lecture will cover pages 188 through 191 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on Chapter 12C, Frequency Response Using Bode Plots Continued. Before we start out on page 188, I want to take a, a quick review of the last lecture. And um, if you take a look, our transfer function, T of S, can be comprised of just single constant K0 term or any one of these other terms, either in the numerator or denominator. We had single S terms in the numerator or single S terms in the denominator. We could have S terms of the form of this form and this form in the numerator, which we called zeros, or the single first order terms of this form in the denominator, which we call poles. And we could even have second order quadratic forms in the numerator, which we called zeros, and the denominator, which we called poles. And we explained zeros always break up at 20 dB per decade, and poles always break down at 20 dB per decade. These, circuit, these transfer functions here, that's a general form, so it's going to look a little bit confusing to you, but remember I showed you how to take a circuit, and we're going to be doing this with, with about eight different circuits here. But you're, I'm going to give you circuits. Some circuits will have op amps in it. But here's a circuit just with a resistor and a capacitor, and we come up with the transfer function of that circuit. This was the tra general transfer function of that circuit. And notice the form. It, does, it has a constant of 1. That's a K0 term. And down here, this is the form, of, this is the first order f form in the, in the denominator. Which is, which is a pull in the denominator. And we talked about how you come up with these, with these forms in this example. Well, other circuits are going to look different, so you're going to come up with other transfer functions as well. But that's how you get these different forms here. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the first three cases. We're going to look at the case where you have the K0. And then we're going to look at the cases where single S terms in the numerator, which is going to result in zeros at the origin and we're going to have single s terms in the denominator which are the minus n which is also going to result in in this case poles at the origin let's look at them one at a time here first of all case one we're going to look at just the k0 term magnitude and phase of the case one case one k0 term just just worry about this at this point just worry about what that guy you have a constant well you know what that looks like it's just a gain of five or a gain of ten or a gain of minus five or a gain of minus ten the transfer function is simply the k0 v v out over v in is k0 the magnitude of that is 20 times the log of the k0 term and the angle is zero because it's it's a real number You don't have any angle associated with it. It's zero degrees. So when you plot that on a Bode plot, what does it look like? We're a dB axis here with respect to frequency, radian frequency. Don't forget these are different. This is this is this is the logarithmic scale down here. This is the non-logarithmic scale. So we have a certain magnitude, whatever this turns out to be, whatever dB it turns out to be, you put it up here. And independent of the frequency through the different scales. That Call this one radian per second. Call that 10 radian per second. Call that 100 radians per second as we label that, that horizontal radian frequency axis. The gain doesn't change. The gain doesn't change up here. And the angle is always zero degrees for all the different radian frequencies. So how do you come up with the K0 so you can make these plots? I'll give you lots of examples here. We'll start out here with example A. Let's say T of S is equal to 100. Well, your K0 is simply 100. The dB is 20 times the log of the absolute value of 100, which is 40 dB. So you have 40 dB at an angle of 0 degrees. Let's look at the next one. Minus 20. The K0 term is a minus 20. dB is 20 times the log of minus 20, which is 26.02 dB. Again, angle 0. How about down here in this transfer function? Don't worry about this term here. Don't worry about that first order term, that, that first order zero, or this first order pull. We're just worried about the K0 term. How would you extract K0 from here? Well, it's already in the time constant form. 
where you have a plus one and a plus one here. So that 50 is the K zero. DB is 20 times the log of the absolute value of that 50, 33.98 DB and the angle zero. Let's do another one. Look at this form down here. This is in a break frequency form. It's 20 times the quantity S plus two. It's understood it's over one. You have to extract K zero from that. So you have to get it in the break frequency form. And I showed you how to do that in the last lecture. You just bring out the two and you divide each thing in here by two. So you get 40 times 0.5 S plus one. Now, what can you extract from here? You can extract a K zero term, which is 40. So you take 20 times the log of 40, whatever that turns out to be is your DB and the angle zero. Look at this example here. I want you to look at that example right there and see if you get a K0 term of 20. It's in a break frequency form. Don't assume the K0 term isn't one there. K0 term is 20 there. The dB is 26.02 dB. And take a look at this example down here. Extract the, the K0 term from that. It's not the 100 because it's in a break frequency form. K0 is equal to five. Therefore, the dB is 14 dB. These are all important. Let me show you um, some, some other examples here. They're a little bit more practical, maybe. We worked some of these out before. Yeah, these guys right here from the last lecture, but let's get into a little bit more detail. All I'm worried about is a K0 term. But here's a transfer function here in this example. 20 times the quantity S plus 100. You have to get that. I mean, you can see the break frequency there, but that's not the constant. The K0 term, I have to write this in a break frequency form. And from this, from this expression, I can see my first break frequency is 100 radians per second. It's a zero. So I know it's going to break up at that break frequency of 100. But what is this, what's this value of dB coming in there? Well, that's the K0 term that gives you that. Can you look at this transfer function and see K0 is 2,000? You take 20 times a log at 2,000, and that gives you 66.02 dB at that point. And when you lay this out on semi-log paper, which we're going to be doing in the next lecture, you're going to be able to take that over at 66.02 dB to a certain point, and you're going to break it up at 20 dB per decade, and you're going to be able to pick out whatever gain you need at any radian frequency, reading it off the Bode plot, and it's very accurate. Let's look at this example down here. T of S is equal to 40 times S plus 10 times the quantity S plus 200. The only thing you can pull out here is the break frequencies. You know the first break frequency is 10 radians per second, and it's a zero. And the second break frequency is 200 radians per second, it's also a zero. So you get, you get, you know, you're going to break up at 10. You know, you're going to break up again at, two, at 200. This is going to break up at 20 dB per decade. And then you get another 20 dB per decade, which is 40 dB per decade. And our short, shorthand notation was a plus one, which meant plus 20 dB per decade. And this one here meant plus two, because we added another, another zero came in, breaking up at another 20 dB per decade. So this plus two meant 40 dB per decade slope, positive slope. Well, how do you how do you know what this gain is here at this point at this what's this fixed gain here below 10 radians per second well you have to find the k0 term k0 term isn't 40 because that's in a break frequency form you have to get in the time constant form and when you do that you can see k0 is 80,000 make sure you can go from here and get a k0 is 80,000 20 times the log of 80,000 gives you 98.06 db that's the reference right there on your log paper. Look at this one down here. T of S is 100 over S plus 80. Well, if you take a look at that, you have to get this in this form. That's not K0. K0 here is 1.25. So I'm rewriting this as 1.25 over S over 80 plus 1. My break frequency is 80. My constant term is 1.25. 20 times the log of 1.25 gives us my 1.94 dB at this point right here. I know it's going to be 1.94 dB all the way over to you at that break frequency. And at that break frequency, it's 80 radians per second. I know it's a pull. Pulls will break down 
at minus 20 dB per decade. So you're just going to go out here one decade on your log paper, which is 800. Find 800. And make sure you come down 20 dB from this point. You come down 20 dB from this point. You come out, you find that point on 800, and you draw your straight line between here and here. That'll give you a 20 dB dec per decade roll off. And then you can just extrapolate that right on down with your straight edge. We'll be doing lots of those. Let's look at another one. I think you get the drift, but I already have these from the last lecture. So we're going to worry about these terms later on in the next in the next lecture. But for now, I'm just worrying about extracting the K0 term. And there's my transfer function. First thing I want to do in that is I want to calculate my K0 term. So I have to get this in this form. Make sure you can go from here to here. My K0 is 0 0.4. If my k0 is 0 0.4, 20 times the log of 0.4 is negative 8 dB. I round it off a little bit. So this point right here is a negative 8 dB. I plot that on my paper. I come straight across till I hit the 2. At the 2, I'm going to have a break. I know there's a break at 2, but what type of break is it? At 2 radians per second, it's a 0 because it's in the numerator. So I'm going to break up 20 dB per decade. I called that plus 1. So I'm going to, at 20... Or at 2 dB, I'm going to be at minus 8. I'm going to add 20 dB to that. When I add 20 dB to that, I'm going to get my plus 12 dB. I'm going to come across on plus 12 dB to the 50 radians per second mark. And I'm going to draw a straight line between that point and that point. Because at that point is where it breaks back with a, z with a pole to 0. And then I'll be able to read right off my Bode plot, my log paper, what that value of gain is at that frequency and all the other frequencies, by the way. That's where we're going with this. Here's the last, here's the last transfer function I gave you, this one down here. Oh, we're not gonna do one party this complex, but if you can see this, you know where we're going. But that's not in any form at all to pull off the constant. I, I can pull off break frequencies here I mean, it's easy to see my break frequencies in order. I find the lowest one and I start it out. It just happens to be the lowest one's a zero. But the first thing I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you calculate the K0 term. Okay. Well, can you look at that and calculate a K0 of 6.25? 6.25. So I'm going to take 20 times the log of 6.25, and that's going to be 15.9 dB. That's where I'm going to be, 15.9 dB at a constant at this point, up to the first break frequency. At that first break frequency, which is going to be at 10 radians per second, it's a zero, so it's going to break up. When it gets to 20 radians per second, I hit that pull. It's going to break back down, which just takes this plus one back to a zero, back to a no slope. You're going to follow that on out. And if you plot this on boat with a straight edge, if you plot this, assuming this at 20 dB per decade gone up, you can get this point. You can get this point. Because at this point, you hit another break of 50. You know, 50 is in the numerator, so it's a zero. It's going to break up until you hit 200. Once you hit 200, you're going to hit another pull. And it breaks back down and gets you back to zero. And if you look at your... If you plot this very carefully with a straight edge, you'll be able to pull these points. And, and when, you, when you substitute 10 for omega, if you go back and you put a j omega in every place you see an s here, if you go back and put a j omega in every place you see an s here, or you go back and put a j omega every place you see an s here, you can calculate. It, it just gives you a complex number. You can calculate in a polar form a magnitude and an angle. Take 20 times the log of that magnitude and you'll be able to verify all these points on every one of these problems. If you want to evaluate this here at maybe 30 radians per second, put a J30 in every place you see an S. Put a J30 every place you see an S. 
multiply it all out, complex number, and you come up with some magnitude at some angle at 30 radians per second. Do the Bode plot. Come out to 30 radians per second and come up and read that, read it off the Bode plot. That is so much easier than making this substitution and getting that magnitude and taking 20 times the log of it. You're going to get the same value. And you'll get the same phase angle when we plot the phase angle on these two. These Bode plots are going to make things a lot easier for you. Now, I gave you a lot of insight on where we're going with this in the next lecture. But all we did here so far is we took a look at these single S terms. And the only other thing I want to take a look at is the case two where we have S to the plus one or S to the minus one terms. This is on page number 190. So what we're looking at now are these terms right here where we're worried about just single S terms. We already took care of the K zero. What, how do you handle these terms? Well, not too bad. These terms are just single S terms. T of S is S to the N. In general, we'll call it S to the N, where N equals the number of zeros because it's in the numerator. We're worrying about zero examples here now. That's why that's a plus sign here. S to the one, S to the two, S to the three, they're all gonna be in the numerator. So they're zero examples at the origin. So we start out by saying S is equal to, T of S is equal to S to the N, where N equals the number of zeros. And since S is equal to J omega, we can write that as T of J omega plus J omega to the N power, where N equals the number of zeros. Can you look at that and see that in DB, it's 20 times the log of that, which is 20 times the log of the frequency to the N power. And you just bring that N out and that's the slope of that line. 20 times n times the log of omega. So here we're plotting omega and the slope of this line here for n equal 1 is 20 dB per decade. If n is equal to 2, if you have s squared, it's 40 dB per decade. If n equal 3, it's 60 dB per decade. And it's, they're s terms in the numerator. So they're breaking up. That's how you handle single s terms in the numerator. And the angles associated with that, if you take a look at the angle associated with it, n can either be 1 or 2 or 3, and for each j term you have, it's 90 degrees. So if n equals 1, it's a plus 90. Why is it a plus 90? Because it's in the numerator. It's a j omega in the numerator. Look, you know that. Let's do it this. Instead of, instead of doing this, single S term. Let's do this. I think the terminology sometimes people get lost. That's equal to, that's equal to mega. Don't forget, that's to the N power. We can make this a general N power. Well, that's equal to omega at an angle of 90 to the N power, where you just multiply the angle times 1, 2, 3, 4 to get, to, to get the additional phase shift. So all I'm saying is that when you have a single S term, n is equal to 1, it's plus 90 all the time. If n is equal to 2, it's, it's sloping at plus 40 dB per decade, and the angle is plus 180 all the time. If n is equal to 3, the slope is plus 60 dB per decade, and the angle is always plus 270. And in case number... 2b, 2a was the zero example, 2b is the pull example, where you have s to the minus n. So you're going to have something like that, or you're going to have something like that. In the denominator, these are pulls. If you take a look, t to the s is s to the minus n, generally speaking, exponent n, 1 over s to the n, where n equals the number of pulls. Since S is equal to J omega, you get the same thing here. And if you take a look at the DB, what's the DB going to be? For the same reason, there's the math. It's going to be in the minus 20 times the exponent, times the log of omega. And the phase angle is going to be equal to negative N times the angle. It's in the denominator. 
So it's a minus 90 degrees or a minus 180 degrees or a minus 270 degrees. That's all. So all I'm showing you here for n equal 1, you get a negative 20 dB per decade slope. It slopes down. And the angle is always going to be minus, here's your zero, it's going to be minus 90 degrees all the time if you have a single term like, like this. If you have a squared term in the denominator, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to be sloping down at minus 20 dB per decade. That's a 2. So the slope in this linear equation up here is minus 20 because n's a 2. And what's the angle going to be? The angle is going to be a minus 2 times 90. It's always going to be a, a minus 180 degrees. What if it's a squared in the denominator? How are you going to handle that as an individual term? Well, if n equals minus 3, m, the slope is minus 60 dB per decade. It's rolling off here. And what's the angle going to be all the time? Minus 3 times 90, which is minus 270. So the only thing we have to do yet, we just went through and I showed you how to handle these single K0 terms. Okay, we called that case one. How do you handle just the K0 term? And then I went to case two and I said, we're divided up into case two A, which is the zero of single S examples in the numerator. And then we went with case two B which is the pull example, which is the single S terms in the denominator. I showed you how to handle those. The only thing we have to do yet, and we're going to do this in the next example, is I'm going to show you how to handle case three. And case three is going to have either this form with a plus n, which is going to be a a zero in the numerator or these first order forms were a minus n where it's shown in the denominator. I'm going to show you how to handle these case three, the zero example, and case three b, which will be a pull example. Once we have those cases under our belt, we're going to go through the 10 examples, many different examples, and I'll show you how, how easy it is to come up with a frequency response to a linear network using Bode plot analysis. And that's magnitudes easier than doing a point to point with plugging in J omegas in a particular transfer function. We're gonna have a lab, one of the labs coming up toward the end of the semester. We're actually gonna we're actually gonna build some of these filters. I'm gonna have you calculate a cup make a couple calculations with J omega. And then you're going to look at the Bode plot, and you're going to see that the Bode plot is extremely accurate if you take your time when you draw it. And that concludes this lecture.